In this video, we're going to go over the biggest winners and losers in the current meta. The Act 3 meta is pretty settled in now that we are 3 weeks deep into the new Act, so we thought it would be a good time to let you guys know who's winning and who's in the dump so far in the new Act. What's going on, it's your host Sergeant Frost, and today we're going to go over some winners and losers in the current Act 3 meta. This will be a very informative video on a few specific agents, so make sure to stick around to the end. But before we dive into our list, let's talk about something you should know that will help you improve your game, such as Valorant Stat Center, AimLab's new top tier tracker that gives you access to data and metrics that only pro players had in the past. Not only that, Stat Center even has revolutionary data that tracks your impact called Delta Damage. So if you want to have all the information you'll ever need to master the game, make sure to click the link in the description and download Valorant Stat Center by AimLab today. Now let's get into the video. The first agent who's on the up and up and is clearly a winner in the current meta is Fade. We do have to preface this specific agent selection by informing you guys that as of the most recent PBE update, the devs are looking into nerfing Fade's prowlers and her ultimate a little bit. The nerfs aren't too concerning as they don't hit the bread and butter of her kit which is her info gathering so she should still be safe for now. But let's get into why she's dominating the current meta. Fade has for the most part replaced Sova in the meta on all maps except the really big ones where her eye isn't as effective, examples being Breeze and Icebox. Because of her replacing Sova, she has seen a huge uptick in play in ranked, so she has become a high priority or a borderline must pick for team comps that are serious about winning. As an agent, Fade possesses duality as an initiator. She's not just an agent that's meant for doing well on attack only, she can also perform well on defense due to the large amount of CC she possesses in her kit. Because of the said various amounts of CC she has, Fade can play almost like a sight denier when on defense. She gathers info with her eye, and then she can use her dogs, her snare, or even her ultimate to capture and impair enemies to discombobulate teams and stop pushes in their tracks. Fade as an agent combos well with various agents on the current Valorant roster. Her info gathering assists duelists and other initiators so that they can get info on enemies and move accordingly. And her CC abilities assist sentinels and controllers with holding down sites and securing map control by force via using her abilities. Something to note is that Fade has a low skill floor as an agent. While using her eye and learning her lineups definitely takes some time and effort to get used to, for the most part, Fade is fairly easy to use and pick up. Her being beginner friendly means that any player can fill with her or pick her up and start using her to a good portion of her potential quickly. This makes her a high value agent for all elos to use. This fact has made her very valuable both in pro play and in rank, and she will remain an S tier agent in the meta until Riot decides to follow through with nerfs in the future. Up next in the winners category is the French Sharpshooter Chamber. One of the biggest reasons Chamber is a winner right now is because of how resilient he is as an agent. This man has weathered the storm of several rounds of nerfs from the devs, including one patch where every single one of his abilities got nerfed in some way. And despite all he's been through, he still stands tall in the meta to this day. Now that's what I consider to be a rock solid kit within an agent. No matter how much Riot tries to nerf Chamber, he still finds ways to stay relevant. This is a testament to how airtight his kit is in general. Chamber plays well with many different agents in the meta, which means he can always slot himself into any team comp and bring value to that team. While being an agent that has a lot of great potential, he is still a relatively user-friendly agent with a low skill floor as a barrier to entry, which means anyone can pick him up and be useful, and he won't be a complete liability to their team. Currently, Chamber is not as overpowered as he used to be due to several nerfs over the course of this episode, but his kit is still versatile and reliable enough where good players can still use him with great success. He has CC, info gathering, mobility, two powerful guns, and a playstyle that allows him to flex between a sentinel and a duelist. Not many agents can simply cover the ground and tick all the boxes that Chamber can during a game. And that is why he is still S tier in the meta. It's probably going to take Riot to rework some of his current abilities if they ever want to truly kick him out of the meta for good. Last up in the winners category this time around is the ELO killer robot KO. KO has quickly become one of the most useful overall agents in the game because of the nature of his kit, which has slowly allowed him to become one of the biggest winners in the meta ever since he was released. All of the utility in his kit can be used selfishly to help his own endeavors, while also still being a very team-friendly agent. KO's suppression crowd control is the bread and butter of his kit and has made him a top priority pick in the meta. Suppression is arguably the best form of crowd control currently in the game behind flashes. His suppression abilities make him a dynamic character because it can be used both aggressively and passively with good effect. For instance, on defense, KO can hold his knife and his ultimate until a team executes onto a site. Once inside of the bomb site, he can activate his suppression tools to take the enemy's abilities away and ruin their site take instantly. On attack, KO and his team can coordinate and plan around his knife and ultimate, so that way they can preemptively knock a bomb site's defenses offline and then proceed to execute into a site within that time window of suppression lasting. 
Like Chamber, KO can play a hybrid playstyle of both an initiator and a duelist. For example, KO can use his flashes, his nade, and his ultimate aggressively to help him entry into sites and collect frags. But he can also be passive and play behind his teammates and throw his abilities around the map to help out the team's plans. KO also has a relatively low skill floor, which means he can be picked up and used to a good portion of his potential without a lot of practice and experience beforehand, which makes him beginner friendly and valuable to use at all elos. Now, at this point in the video, we unfortunately have to warn you guys about a few agents who are not doing too well in the meta right now and should be used with caution. First up in this category is the new controller, Harbor. I'm gonna have to admit, I had higher hopes for Harbor when he was announced, but he is just not having the impact most people thought he would initially. So we have to admit that while it may be a controversial take in the community right now, Harbor is not as powerful as many people would like to believe at the moment. It's a general consensus within the pro community that he can't be a main controller right now, mainly because his vision blocking tools are not as sufficient and trustworthy compared to his counterparts. Because of this, Harbor may be able to fit into the meta as a secondary controller, but due to the nature of the meta in its current state, double controllers is not the optimal way to play right now, which means his role as a smoke agent is not as tactically sufficient as what it should be. Harbor also does not have any damaging abilities in his kit, which in turn does not give him much kill pressure or kill threat compared to the other agents in the class. On top of not having many damaging abilities, he lacks real CC abilities compared to the other controllers as well. As it stands currently, the only CC he has is the slow on his walls and the stuns and marks from his ultimate. Those two lone pieces of crowd control are quite desolate compared to the other controllers that have more in their kits, with a few examples being Astra and Viper. Keeping it real with you guys, Harbor has the potential to be great. Right now, the meta is not working out in his favor since he's showing he can't fulfill the main smokes role within a team comp. With that being said, it may take buffs and changes from the devs to give him enough power to fulfill that role. But at the moment, we don't know if Riot has any plans of potentially buffing him to take him higher in the future. Brimstone is not in the best of places right now in the current meta. He has slowly been fading out of relevance in the meta for quite some time now, as other controllers are proving to be more useful than him as they become more meta on certain maps. And on top of that, in Act 3, a new controller was introduced in Harbor. So Brim now has even more playing time competition within his own class. Brimstone's kit has potential to handicap his team due to its limitations compared to his counterparts. Omen, Viper, Astra, and even Harbor can all smoke better than he can because he is hard limited to three smokes. Which leads us into our next point, which is Brim's main problem being his static three smokes. This limited smokes problem presents an issue for teams that want to be dynamic with their map movements and executes in game. Having three smokes severely limits Brimstone's potential and it limits the potential for what your team can do in a game. Because if you think about it, one of the most common strategies in Valorant on attack is faking a bombsite hit by throwing down smokes. Brimstone is not the best controller for this strategy because he can't afford to waste all of his smokes on a fake, because then he won't have any other smokes to use later in the round. Not being able to pull off a fake strategy efficiently puts Brimstone lower on the meta's totem pole behind agents like Omen and Astra who have the potential to have more than three smokes in a round. While he may not be the best main smoker, he does have some use on maps like Bind where he can use his ultimate to clear out high traffic areas like Hookah and U-Haul. And he does have the potential of lineups which can help him secure rounds on attack. But outside of his Molly lineups and ultimate prowess, he struggles to contribute much to a team comp compared to what the other meta controllers can offer. As a disclaimer, with the PBE changes coming in soon, Cypher's future is looking bright. We hope that these buffs will help him become more viable in the immediate future, especially with the increase in length to his tripwires which can allow Cypher to change up how he places his trips, which in turn can totally change how Cypher plays a site. And Cypher's ultimate change is also a nice buff to what was once seen as an okay-ish info gathering ability, with new changes allowing his ultimate to ping twice, the time restriction on corpses being removed, and the max cast distance being increased. Cypher's ultimate is now a lot more powerful than it was in its current state. With that being said, Cypher is looking up in the meta as long as these buffs Riot implemented make it through to the live build of the game. But in the reality with his current state of being, Cypher is dead last in terms of value amongst the other Sentinels. In his current state, he does not hold sights as well as Killjoy and Chamber. He also does not possess a lot of active crowd control like Sage. And right now, he's currently being forced into a role of a camera bot where he uses his trips on flanks and then pulls out his camera to scout and spot out enemies. It's great that he has buffs potentially coming through, but in his current state right now, Cypher is a loser in the meta because he is suboptimal as a sentinel compared to his current counterparts. And that is all we have for this winners and losers in the meta video. If you enjoyed the content, then be sure to drop a like and consider subscribing to our channel. Also, don't forget to check out our website to gain access to some truly amazing coaching. This has been your host, Sergeant Frost, and good luck on the grind in the new act.